I made $826,000 in two years with just one no-code SaaS idea, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it so that way you can do the same. This company is called Closeify, and it's a marketplace to hire commission-only salespeople that I founded in January of 2021, and then I exited the majority of the company in March of 2023, and I'm gonna bring you back and show you exactly how I did it. Now, I started this company at the age of 20, so not only did I make a lot of mistakes, so I'm gonna show you how to avoid those mistakes as well, so not only can you do this, but you can do it better. So starting a successful SaaS company, or any company, for that matter. It starts with the idea. And there's a few key requirements that I look for when starting any new SaaS company. Number one, does it make a business owner more money? Two, is it recession proof? Three, can I charge $50 a month or more? And four other competitors making money with this already. I almost always sell B2B or business to business because I found that business owners have a lot more money to spend than consumers. And if you're able to make a compelling sales argument about how your product makes them more money, it's very easy to sell. With Closeify, it was a very easy sales argument. If we are able to supply them with talented commission only sales reps for their business, obviously they're going to make more money as a result of hiring talented commission only sales reps. There was very low risk for them. And then when I think of being recession proof, I think if we were in an economic downturn or if things were just like shaky, would people still need my solution? And again, with Closeify, even if the times were turbulent, people always need more sales reps. There's never going to be a period where literally no one is hiring sales reps. So I felt it was a very safe idea, no matter what happens with the economy. Charging $50 a month or more is important because it makes it much easier for you personally to build a commission only sales team. And so I realized that that's what I was really good at was building sales teams. And it's very hard to do that with a product that's under $50 a month. That doesn't mean I would never do a product that charges less than $50 a month, but just understand you're going to need a lot of volume and you're going to need a really good demo video slash sales video to get people to sign up on the web page. Now, this one may seem a little bit controversial, but I actually want to have a lot of competitors in this space that are all doing really well because this just shows me that it's validated, there's product market fit, and that if people are making money with it, why can't I? You know, people say, oh, like, I won't do this idea because it's saturated, but people don't understand how big the pie actually is. And you really only need to get a small, small fraction of it to make an incredible income and an incredible life for yourself. And so I personally saw a lot of people making money as sales recruiters. And so I just decided to put a little bit of a different spin on it. And instead of being like a done for you recruitment agency service, I turned it into a self-serve hiring platform. And that was how I carved out my own blue ocean inside of a red ocean. So now that we've gone over kind of the requirements for a good SaaS idea, just really quickly to help you find them, I like to go look through Acquire. So if you go to acquire.com and you filter a software company doing over $100,000 per year, that's where I like to look for inspiration and then I run them through these checklists to find one that I wanna test out. I don't wanna to go too in depth into how to get an idea in this video because I have another video on that that I'll link in the description. Now, once you have your idea, you wanna test the waters a little bit before you actually go and put too much time, money, or effort into this. So my favorite way to do this is to build an early bird waitlist page. I'll throw up on the screen an example of one that I've done before. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna call out your ideal client profile. You wanna say the benefits of the product that you're building, and you wanna say why they should join the waitlist. So this could be something like a large discount when you launch. This could be like a, a free course. You know, when they sign up, when it launches, give them some reason to give you their email address to be notified when your product is live. Once the landing page is up, you're going to drive traffic with like outbound DMs, Facebook groups, and content marketing. For an example, I made a waitlist page for my power dialer that I'm building and I would join Facebook groups of agency owners. I would basically make like a lead magnet post and like agency owners, here's how to book X amount more demos with cold calling. If you want the free course, like just put your email in below. And that was how I got emails from my waitlist when I was building the power dialer. Your goal should be to collect about 50 emails to validate your idea. And then also if you're able to do this, then now you literally have a list of 50 people that you can sell to day one when your product is ready. So once you've got 50 emails and you've validated the product, now it's time to actually build it. And we want to do this as quickly and as affordably as possible. Again, we don't want to throw a lot of money in up front, especially like when I started Closeify, I didn't have the money to just front everything. So I had to get crafty with it. And this is where no code tools come in and even AI now. And so for Closeify, I actually scrapped together the MVP using the following tech stack. So I use Stacker for the user interface, Airtable for the backend data. I used member stack for the memberships, Stripe for payments, and then Zapier to tie everything together. So I was able to build the MVP of Closeify on that stack for less than $500 and it was super ugly. It didn't look good at all, but it did what an MVP is supposed to do. And it still drove the main value add that I was promising, which was vetted commission only salespeople. 
Now, there's a lot of good options out there right now that range in difficulty. You have Softer.io, Bubble.io, Flutterflow, and then you even have some of these AI tools, you know, such as Create.xyz, you have Bolt.new, Cursor, etc. I recommend learning one of these and getting really good at building on one of these platforms because then what you're able to do as well is you're able to crank out these products quickly. And if you can crank out products quickly, you can test more ideas because the first idea that you test out, it might not be the grand slam home run winner. And so you might not have your big winner until your third, fourth, fifth, 10th SaaS product, right? Now I've actually partnered up with Ambitious Labs for people that want to learn how to build on Flutterflow. It's a super comprehensive program with tens of hours of content, a custom learning platform, a custom trained AI to answer all of your questions. And so Flutterflow is awesome because you can actually export the code. And so if you're interested in learning how to build on Flutterflow, all the information for that will be linked in the description. Now, once your product is built, again, you're gonna see the theme here. We wanna take it to market quickly and affordably. The best option to do this is still cold email. It is literally how we got all of our early customers at Closeify, and I'm gonna break down exactly how to do it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna buy 10 secondary domains that forward to your main domain. So if your main domain is tryclosify.com, you're gonna go and buy other domains like go tryclosify.com. And you're just gonna add a bunch of other different prefixes in front of that. And you're gonna, again, you're gonna have them all forward to your main domain. Then you warm up those domains so you connect them to a tool like SmartLead. And it's gonna take about two weeks to warm them up, which basically just makes sure you don't land in spam and make sure your domains don't get burned. Once your domains are warmed up, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to build a list of people to reach out to. I personally like to use ListKit for this. So you're gonna use their filters to basically build a list of your ideal client profile and I'll kind of walk you through how to do it. So if you're targeting marketing agencies, you might choose the marketing industry. You might do 11 to 50 people for, you know, the person you might put like founder, owner, CEO, president might be the keywords that you target. And then you can even get like kind of crazy with it and you can target businesses based off of the technology that they use. And so let's say that again, we're talking about Closeify. Let's say I want to get people that are trying to hire salespeople. I might target businesses that have HubSpot installed by making the assumption that if they have an expensive CRM, they probably have a fast growing sales team. So you can get really, really like interesting with it. Once we have our list built, we're going to load that into SmartLead, which is the sending platform. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make our subject lines and we're gonna make a few different script variations to test out. So I've been doing cold email like a lot since 2021. So let me tell you like my best subject lines and my best scripts that have performed literally since 2021. Okay, so three subject lines that always do really good. The classic, literally just quick question, always works to this day, still works. The second one is like, like our business name and their business name and then like intro. So for example, Closeify and Zapax introduction. That one works really well. And then the third one is like what our product does for their business name. So for example, power dialer for Closeify, something like that works really well. Now for the script, it's super simple. You want your cold email scripts to be super short. Like they need to be able to be read in like 30 seconds or less because people don't like getting cold emails. And so if they actually have to read, they're not gonna answer. So keep it short. One example, is something like, hey John, quick question. Question, is your business currently hiring salespeople? Literally, that's how simple it can be. And if they say yes, then you can move them into you know, a demo, into a sales call. The key here is really just a conversational starting question. So you can say, hey John, is business name looking to add more leads this month? Like it can be super simple. The other type that you can do is kind of like the big fat claim. So you can say, hey John, we just helped this company grow their sales team from X to Y in 90 days. Interested to see if we can do the same for you. Now, the other thing that you can do, especially if you don't have like social proof or testimonials, is at a risk reversal. So you'd say something like, P.S. If you don't get results, you don't pay. But that's really it. You wanna keep it super simple. What's important with cold email is volume. So you wanna to try to get up to 50,000 cold emails per month as soon as possible. So you're gonna need more than 10 domains to do that. So basically how you scale it up is whenever you wanna scale, you basically have to go buy more domains because you can only send up to like 30 emails per day per domain. So if you wanna send more, you just have to go get more domains, go back through the same process of warming them up, buy another list, rinse and repeat. Now at the start, you're gonna be the one replacing applying to these cold email responses yourself. But as soon as you do start to ramp up, you're gonna to wanna to get an inbox manager. So there's just someone that replies to so the cold email replies for you, stays on top of it and moves them to a demo. And then you're gonna to wanna to take the first sales calls yourself because you're gonna get a lot of valuable feedback and you're gonna to wanna to document everything. You're gonna to wanna to document the biggest like frequently asked questions slash objections that you're getting. You're gonna to wanna to notice like what are the main selling points I'm realizing that people really care about. And you're gonna to wanna to record your calls and you're gonna to wanna to document all of this so that when it's time for you to hire your first salesperson, you're easily able to onboard them. I recommend taking the sales calls yourself until you're booking consistently five calls per day. And then I recommend getting your first salesperson. So once you've done this and you've kind of bought back some of your time by hiring a salesperson,
person, it's time for you now to go on and crack the next client acquisition channel. So the next two easiest to add are gonna be cold calling and LinkedIn outbound because they're very complimentary and you can literally just use the same list that you've already cold emailing to make your results even better. My script on LinkedIn is basically the exact same as it is on cold email. I would literally just be like, hey John, is your business currently hiring more sales reps? For cold calling, I try to only call people that have positively replied to one of our cold emails and I'll say something like, hey John, I saw you reply to our email and you were interested in what we had to offer. I thought instead of going back and forth on email, we could just block in a time right now. And then I would say something like, does this day, this time work? And then I would send them a calendar invite. So when you're actually then sending people an email, connecting with them on LinkedIn, and calling them, your outbound performance is going to skyrocket at minimum. You're going to book 50% more demos by adding those two layers on top of cold email. Now, the last thing that I did that really helped Closeify grow was I invested in SEO or search engine optimization very early. As soon as cold email started working and we started getting customers and we started making money, I literally just took that money and invested into an SEO agency, even though I knew it was going to take six plus months. Instead of going and buying something dumb for myself, I just put all the money back into the business. And then Nine months later, Closeify was ranking number one for a ton of searches like higher commission only sales reps. It still is right now if you want to go look it up. And that started to bring in a ton of intent based traffic because then these are people that are really searching for you know what we have to offer. And so that started to get us a lot of customers organically as well and still does to this day. And so if we were reverse engineer, you know, kind of how I was able to do this, it really came down to finding an idea that had a very strong product market fit and it was serving a starving market. People were truly dying for a better solution to hire sales reps than recruiters. And so it was a starving market that I was selling to. And then I was able to get my product in front of people affordably and quickly by utilizing these outbound strategies. But what I didn't do well that you guys can do better is I didn't do what I do now. I didn't do content marketing. I didn't think it would work for you know that business business offer, which is totally wrong. And so I really messed that up by not doing content for Closeify when I was still running it. And another thing that you know I didn't do then that is super relevant now, it wasn't as relevant then, is hiring creators. Every single SaaS company should be hiring creators. And these were things that I just wasn't thinking about. I also never really tried to track paid ads. I didn't really want to. I just liked building sales teams. And so I was really negligent to these other client acquisition channels like content, like hiring creators, like paid ads that all work super well. And if I would have done those things as well, it would have literally added rocket fuel on top of it because everything makes everything perform better together. When you do content with outbound, the first thing someone does when they get a cold email from you is they look you up. And so if they look you up and you're a no one, they're less likely to respond. If they look you up and you have YouTube videos, you're on podcasts, you have press, they're they're much more likely to respond. If someone sees a paid ad of yours, there's a good chance they look you up. Same thing. Or if someone you know, sees an organic video of you and then they see your ad, they're more likely to click on the ad. And so all of these things perform better when you do everything together. And I was so stuck in my ways that I just wanted to focus on building the sales team and focusing on outbound and hiring more cold callers and doing more cold email that I neglected these other things. And so that's where I messed up that you guys can do so much better than me is realize you need to do everything. You, you literally need to do everything. You need to start with one. Like I said, you need to start and crack your first client acquisition first, but then don't think that just because you crack cold email, okay, I'm only going to do cold email. Eventually you need to get to a point where you're doing everything and it's all working and meshing together because that's how you get to the next level. But if you can find a starving market and you can do that, you can make a ton of money because that's exactly how I made it. over $800,000 in two years by literally just finding a starving market and putting it in front of them. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. I'm going to link another video in the description for you to watch so you can actually go get that idea. I have an in-depth video on how to get ideas that I'll link in the description and thank you for watching.